All right, so I was on Facebook and in a couple of cycling groups. Anyway, some, some random person posted this saying that 60 RPM is better than 100 RPM. So immediately I was like, hmm, let's have a look at this study. So anyway, effect of cadence on time trial performance in recreational female cyclists. All right, so number one, it's not really very valid to me because I'm not a recreational female cyclist. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's have a look. Right, so we got, got some people. Did a study, so the impact of pedaling cadence on cycling performance. So we've only got the abstract, we don't have the whole the whole study, unfortunately, because I don't really want to pay for it. Um, it was determined the effect of cadence on a time trial. So you're like, all right, fair enough. So 10 female rec cyclists volunteered to participate in the study. I'm not sure how well trained they are because that's pretty important in cadence because generally the less well trained you are, the lower cadence you prefer. So again, that's it's annoying because they don't say that. So we're not 100% sure. But anyway, the subjects, so we have 10 cyclists, so it's not... It's not a huge study, like let's be honest. So already the study's starting to annoy me because it's like you can't really judge too much when you've literally done 10 female cyclists and I have no idea how much they cycle. Like they could literally do five hours a week. Like, I don't know. Anyway, so one to assess, anyway, so this is the things that they do three exercises, one to assess their peak oxygen uptake and two time trials. So the canes was randomly ordered and fixed for each time trial. So I'm not sure exactly how they do it, but I guess they do it maybe with a, um, a, what's it called like a, a wahoo kicker or a tax neo and sometimes you can get the cadence to be fixed and the power output changes um i'm not really sure on this one but anyway we'll see uh the time trial heart rate uh so they basically just measure time tra um throughout the heart rate the heart rate the blood lactate um the power obviously and the vo2 so that's uh like the volume motion uptake i believe and the ratings of perceived exertion so the major finding of this study was that the significantly faster TT during the 60 RPM condition versus the 100 RPM condition. So basically they're saying it's better to do 60 RPMs than 100 RPM. So it took them 34 minutes to do 8 kilometers, so hardly zooming, and 37 minutes on average at 100 RPM. So you also got higher out, um, differences for the heart rate, um, and then we also had the power output. Now this is where the study really is just pisses me off. Like 147 watts. Like obviously 100 cadence for 147 watts is wrong. Like I don't think anyone is saying that 150 watts you should be pedaling at 100 RPM. Like obviously then it's probably better to do 80, 85 depending on like how tiring it is. So it's like obviously it's like a stupid study. Like how many people are like pedaling at 150 watts like during a time trial? Okay, like some people are, but like 90% of people who race time trials are going to be going over 150 watts unless it's like a 24 hour time trial. And then maybe this study is useful, but I don't, I, like, it's just retarded. Like, I don't understand who gives the people funding for this. Like, why would you want your hard-earned money to literally go for this study where they choose two cadences that are so far apart and then just try and deduce? And then the results suggest that the recreational female cyclists may benefit from adopting a low cadence. Well, no, it's just like 60 RPM is better than 100 RPM, but ideal might be in between, which is 80 RPM. It's like one is just slightly worse than the other. Like, it's just retarded in so many ways. And also, the other thing that really pisses me off whenever they say heart rate, it's like, yeah, but heart rate is irrelevant. You, like, it doesn't really show anything. It's like, you can, sometimes my heart rate's way high, sometimes it's way lower. And like, the cadence, if I do like 100 RPM or whatever, my heart rate's going to be higher, but I might be able to sustain the power longer than if I did 50 cadence when my heart rate is lower, but then my legs tire out. So it's like... Oh, it annoys me quite a lot. And anyway, we've also got some other great, this is like, these are some of the other studies that people have done. I don't know if it's the same person, but anyway, you're like Dr. Federico Formenti. Again, like, it's just, he, again, he did like, they were pedaling at literally 50 watts at 100, like 110 RPM, 50 watts. Like, why, why would you do this study? It's retarded again. And then you look at Chris Froome, he does 97 RPM at 390 watts. Like, at least do it at different intensities. Like, that's... It's just retarded when they do these studies and then try and get something out of it. Like, okay, fine. If you just want to concentrate on like real recreational cycles, like 50 to 150 watts, then yes, like 100 RPM is too high. I think most people agree. But when you're actually trying to then draw conclusions from that into a time trial like situation, I'm just like, well, yeah, but like if I'm doing a time trial, or like eight kilometer time trial, and we hold like 330, 350 watts, which is very different to 150 watts. Like, I, I don't really understand it. It doesn't make any sense, like why people try and get these different 
conclusions from a study that just isn't based to do it. Like, I mean, it's not necessarily the author's fault. The author probably just got told, this is the study, we want to look at like low cadence or whatever, like have a look at and do this study and they're like, all right, fine, 10 cyclists will do it. But it's like the other people who then look at the scientific study and then just extrapolate massively and be like, oh, well, low cadence is better for an eight kilometer time trial. It's like, done. It's like, well, no, 60 RPM is better than 100 RPM when you're pedaling at 150 watts. But there's probably an ideal cadence in between those. And then you look at, again, like, and the Montezon command, I mean, if that was really true, 60 RPM was better than it's just like, look at this, like everyone uses ridiculously low cassettes because no one wants to like, everyone wants to spin. For me, I, like, I prefer 85 and 90 cadence. That's, that's where I like to be. But you can see here, people are using 34, 32s um, up the Zonkel. And obviously, and that's like, that's quite nuts. Um, so I just don't really understand these studies. I don't know who funds them. I don't know what the point of them is. Because... It's such a stupid study. I just, like, I still can't get my head around it. Why they literally did 10 female cyclists pedaling 150 watts and chose two cadences. Like, at least choose, like, like three cadences, like 60, 80, 100. Then you might be able to tell, oh, 80 is optimal, 60 is bad, 100 is bad as well. But 80 is the best. Instead, now it's just like, oh, low cadence is better. It's like, well... Oh, it just annoys me so much. I know I'm rambling a bit and repeating myself a lot, but I just I still can't get my head around it. Um, and the efficiency is better. It's just like, well, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I mean, like, there's a good curve um, of, like, power and cadence, and it's, like, the optimal cadence. I might actually have a look if I can see it now. Dr. Ferrari has this curve. I believe it's him. Um, cadence to power curve. And it, it shows you roughly, if you're doing this power, what curve you should be doing. Um... It's pretty interesting, to be honest. Um, is this, this might be it, potentially. No, I uh, don't think it is. Uh, yeah, potentially this is it. So it's just saying, like, when the best cadence is. So it's basically, like, at a certain point... Um, oh, no, this is all wrong. Anyway, what it basically says is that at a, like, like 800 watts, the ideal cadence is this. And it's, like, at 400 watts, the ideal cadence is, like, 100 and then like 300 watts is like 90 or something. And then it roughly goes like that. Like obviously it's not perfect, but that's like for the average person. Um, and it's quite useful. And at like obviously 150 watts, like the ideal cadence is probably like 70 or something. Like depending on how hard you're going. Because obviously you have to like imagine if you're going full gas at 200 watts, then your cadence probably will be higher than if you're going like a pro rider, like just chilling out noodling along at 200 watts where you're like not even trying. Like obviously the cadence will be slightly different. But even so, like for, a, for a, like... Person going full gas at 200 cadence, if you use 100 RPM, it's just like too much. It just, it just doesn't really make sense. But anyway, I hope this is very informative for you. And hopefully you can realize that when you look at these stupid scientific studies about cadence, you realize that they're all completely useless, like 99% of them, because they choose ridiculous wattage. Like, I'd really like to see someone actually do a study properly. I even see GCN, like, they still don't do it real properly. Like, a proper study, getting people doing it, like, for a year, like, really concentrating on the cadence and getting people to, like concentrate like just on like if they're a low cadence rider concentrate on high cadence rider are they faster all that stuff be good if someone did a real like comprehensive study but i don't think anyone will because cadence is such a difficult subject um and it's really hard to like prove anything um but anyway cheers for watching and i'll see you in the next vid